you talked about how the streets, you knew the streets. Yeah. And that gave you the edge. And I yeah. want to point this out to anybody who's out there and you're struggling and you come from not the best circumstances, yeah. no money, um, things just don't seem to be going your way. Yeah. You don't know what God is preparing you for. Yeah. And you have to understand, I need, I must trust the process. Yeah. Because if God has you there, it's for a reason and he's building yeah. you up. In your case, you was on the streets. Yes. And those street smarts helped you when you made it into them corporate suites. Yeah. That was one thing I just want to touch on. No matter where you are, guys, and you're listening to this, please understand. Embrace where you are. Fight to get out of there. But embrace where you are because you don't know what God is preparing you for. And the second thing, Pete, that you spoke about again and again and again was education. Yes. I, I, I love the part of your story where you went after and sought education from probably the most successful at that time lawyer in the game, being yeah. Michael Jackson's attorney. Yes. And it cost you $25,000 or you charged $25,000 an hour. I don't know if you paid him, whatever it was. But he yeah. gave you some of the best advice in your life. And yeah, I just yeah. love the, 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 the fact, and again, I want to push this to somebody out there. Seek wise counsel. It's something my grandfather used to always tell me. Seek wise counsel. Seek education. And in your case, just speak on that for a second, Pete. What, what was it that made you, because there's a lot of attorneys out there. And yeah. I'm sure that you had access to a bunch of, of um, you know, lesser expensive attorneys at the moment. But you yeah. chose to go for the best because you were seeking that education. Yeah, well, don't be afraid to invest in yourself. That's the first thing you need to know. And when you're in a business and you want to be successful, you have to deal with the experts. At that time, Michael Jackson attorney was the top attorney in the game. Uh, he already closed probably one of the biggest deals ever for Michael Jackson. I mean, he had Neverland. I mean, you see a black guy having that type of money. And Michael Jackson was only getting 22% 20, of record. And when I left out that meeting with that guy, which I spent 25 k that was in the 90s, early 90s. And that was probably the best money I ever spent. And How that guy... Huh? Do you remember how long that meeting was? That meeting was 15 minutes. So you telling me for education, yes. investing in yourself, yeah. you spent $25,000 for 15 minutes, but it turned out to be the best money you ever spent. Yeah. Go ahead, P. And when I sit down with the guy, he told me, he said, the only deal you could get better than Michael Jackson would be a distribution deal where you get 85% and a record company get 15%. But he didn't think that would never happen. And he also told me I'm gonna need $200,000 of marketing money if they did give me a deal like that. So when I left, I went and got prepared. I started selling my cassettes and CDs out the trunk of my car and just building up some capital to be able to do a deal of that magnitude. And they just go to show you when, when God is for you. Um, I end up bumping into Priority Records and he asked me what kind of deal I wanted. I said, I want a distribution deal. And they wanted to give me a lot of money up front. And I'm like, I don't want that, I don't want no money. I just want a distribution deal. You know, the rest was history. And I think that's how God worked. But that's how education worked. Um, when you have the right tools to deal with your business and, and people look at it like, man, he spent a lot of money, but I was preparing to make a lot of money. Those are the type of goals that I set. Like I said, some people was only seeing the mustard seed. I was seeing a tree. Hey, I'm about to build a whole money tree now to where I could feed so many families. I can create millionaires now. It's not just gonna be me. And uh, once I got that deal, I was able to put records out when I want, how I want it. And that was something a lot of artists back in those days couldn't do because the record company had the control. 
when I put up my own money, now I have the control. So yeah. people don't realize that's what it is to be a boss, to be an owner of a company, is being able to control the narrative. That's why we are losing right now. We are out here fighting. We are out here protesting because we don't control the narrative for our life. That's why we have so much uh, injustice. Uh, we fight for equality. Uh, we don't have African-American judges, African-American politicians that, that we are voting into these offices. They control that now. So they control the narrative even in Hollywood because we don't have, we don't own that. Uh, when you look at the actor that just died. From Chadwick Boseman. Yes, that played Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When you pull up on the internet, which we are afraid to look at the truth, you see his salary was 500K for a movie like that made billions. We also go and look that his signing bonus back in was 0.1%. So he ended up off a billion and something dollars. He ended up probably walking away with $2 million. But when you go look at Robert Downey Jr. and say 75 million for Avengers, that kind of makes you mad. And now Chad is the biggest actor ever in the world. And what I hate, when he was losing weight, this is a man that was fighting. People was going on social media, gospel sites, like he's doing drugs, uh, what's wrong with him. They had all kinds of memes about him. That's why we have to control the narrative. It's only gonna happen through ownership. They're continuously beating up on us because all we wanna do is pay our light bill, gas bill, and keep a roof over our head. And they know that. We don't wanna, go through the pain and the suffering to say, okay, I might be doing this for a couple of years, but the payoff is going to be so big that I'm not going to have to worry about this no more. And that's what being an entrepreneur is about. That's what's making those sacrifices to, to be at the top of your game is about. We need more of us. It don't need to be one or Puffy or Jay-Z or Master P or whatever. Uh, it needs to be more. We need to have thousands I mean, they have hundreds of thousands. They have so many different people that when you look at right now, even in Hollywood, most of our people are just happy to have a job. But when you talk about it's unfair at the end, you can look it up because now it's social media. It's social media that is not hidden. It's right there in black and white. I'm watching now Chad movies come on ABC, everything now. Now they're putting out Jackie Robinson again. If we go back and look at how much that man made off those movies, you're going to be angry. Disney should give some money to his family, to his estate. Like, they're making too much off us because we don't own nothing. Now, we're, we're the greatest talent in the world. I'm changing that narrative where I realize that product outweighs talent. I realize that the products I'm making is going to be around even when I'm not here where I can feed my family off it. Mm -hmm. That's the type of generational wealth they build. So when I walked out that office with that contract, that's what I was thinking. I don't want just a check because they brainwash. I mean, even in hip hop, everybody won't get the check. That's what they say. Now to get the bag, get the check. Yeah. But that check is still bringing you back to 400 years of slavery that, we're not going to get over unless we do it with ownership. And people say, how do we beat, speak back to my time, P, how do we beat that 400 years ago because everybody angry and mad about that? I say, you know how you beat it? You beat it with education. You beat it with ownership. You beat, you beat it with success. You don't keep dwelling on the past. You beat it with success because we already behind. We 400 years behind. How do we beat it? We beat it with success. And it start with us. It start with us having a conversation like we having, and it start with us recognizing that we are already 400 years behind. So we got a lot of work to do. And we got to do it with unity because we stronger together. I want to celebrate my brothers that are successful. I don't want to envy them. I don't want to count their pockets. I just want to celebrate them. 
I love it. I love it. it let, let's stick to that word conversation for a second. You said it starts with a conversation yeah, like man. you and I are having. Yes. But let's speak because I, 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 I think so many people are not successful or even where they want to be. Everybody because doesn't dream right. of Listen, this. We are afraid Everybody to do knows. what we're doing right now, having a conversation. Because think about it. African-Americans, we want to outdo each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to outdo me in the music business. I'm saying use me. You don't have to outdo me. If that happens, it happens. Everybody want to outdo Puffy. Everybody want to outdo Jay-Z. Y'all don't have to outdo us. Utilize our wisdom. Utilize our expertise. We could help you get bigger deals than even we had. And so that's what I got that lawyer for. People don't realize. I went to the best because I knew he was used to closing big deals. Mm -hmm. We don't utilize each other. We don't have conversation with each other. And we're not. So my thing is, too, we don't show each other our work. So imagine all the people I hired, even in my company, I paid them their work and their value. That's what I was bringing on. So if I'm going to hold a conversation with this guy, I'm saying, here, man, what is your work? And I'm only in there for 15 minutes. And I paid this man 25K. We don't want to pay people that look like us because of our skin tone. Why well, ain't y'all shouldn't be paying him because he already got money. No, that's not business. But you're going to pay the shoe salesman that knows nothing about your business. We're going to pay a shoe salesman to teach me about the music business. There you go. It makes no sense to me. Uh, uh, you're going to pay a shoe salesman to show you some financial advisor about your business that they know nothing about. Just because they put a suit and a tie on and walk in the room and look like a businessman. Because we're afraid of us. We have to stop being afraid of us. And that's what's happening right now with us and the police. The police are afraid of us. We're afraid of them. Nobody having a conversation because there's good people and bad people underneath those badges. That's it. There's good people and bad people in the world. That's it. The bad people should be incarcerated. The good people should be celebrated. That's what we're doing now. We have to celebrate us having this conversation. All the stuff that you've done. Think about it. You're not sitting around angry at Puffy. You like celebrating Puffy because you know you're your own man. That lets you know you can go out there and get it. You played your role. Now it's time for you to go do what you need to do. And that's what being a boss is about. A boss is not mad at the next boss. Even if you look at back in the days, when you see the bosses come in the room, they all celebrate each other because they all are doing their part. Everybody is playing a role. And we playing the crabs in the buckets role to where we want to take the other one down instead of letting, letting them go blossom. Because now we can help the community. We can help the kids. I tell people all the time, the more I make, the more I can give. There I can't go. give if I don't make nothing. Think about it. There you go. <laughs> so it's a lot of people. Quite, like Even when I came out with the noodles, how much sodium? And I said, well, how much sodium is in ramen noodles? Give me a chance to put something on the shelf. I put the rice out. Well, is the rice healthy? You've been buying Uncle Ben for 130 years. <laughs> Nobody ever asked, was it? And I, and I go to the same company and get my rice made. Let me get it on the shelf, and then I can make you something for whole food, because everybody don't want that. But if you want a, a healthy alternative, we are making those products, but we have to get in there and get the shelving space. You know how hard it is for a black man to get into Walmart and Target and all these chain stores? Yes, I and do. It's, it's hard. But our people, you know, they don't understand that. We have to stop putting each other down before we get it. Even with my shoes, people, well, you know, I don't like this. You, you didn't like Nike at first. But as soon as they got Jordan, you brought Nike because of Jordan. That's a multi-billion dollar company that Jordan don't even hold no stock in. Think about it. He, made a, he became a billionaire for owning his trademark, his name. Other than that, they would have just paid Jordan whatever they paid him and it had been done. That's right. 
So this is about educating us. Give us a chance and opportunity because if we put money into business that come from us, then we could put money back into the community. I tell people all the time, we don't have to burn down our blocks. We could buy them back. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.